these are the things you have to look out for in your relationships because people be birthing children with these people. You know, and I think a lot of times people don't think about this when they're in relationships because they're so caught up by the facade. But then it's like, oh, this is going to be the parent to your child. Mm. This is who you're going to mold another human with in Mm. this realm. Like, what are y'all creating? What's up, guys, and welcome to another episode of It's Giving. I am your host, Sarah Fontenot, and if you have not yet, make sure to click that button below and get subscribed. Hit that little bell so you get a notification with each new piece of content, okay? This is all places healing. This is all places real, raw, dynamic conversations that are going to create conversations in the home, and please believe that this conversation that's about to happen right now Trust me, I've done it again. I will not disappoint, okay? We are joined by a serial entrepreneur. She is a brick and mortar business owner. She is out here providing access, giving out opportunities, changing the world, helping children all over the world. I mean, literally doing so many incredible things. And I'm also honored to be able to call her my cousin. We got my family on the show today. Please give it up for Miss Helen. Ah! <laughs> Hi! <laughs> oh, 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 and she's an actress. <laughs> okay. Don't forget. You know, you know, you know. How are you? I'm amazing. I'm so happy to have you on the show today. Me too. Thank you. It's for been a me. mission to get you on here. I know. I'd be busy. This be girl busy. is booked and busy, y'all. Booked and busy. But you got me on the couch. You're here. We here. Very excited. So let's get it. All right. So, first question I have to ask you if this season of your life were called It's Giving, and you had to fill in the blank, what would it be called? And you have to say, it's giving. Mm, it's giving amplified rebirth. Ooh, yeah. break that down. <laughs> um, okay, so for those who don't know, I'm a Scorpio. Yes. And uh, for those who don't really understand, as a Scorpio, we're constantly going through the death and the rebirth. So I'm constantly going through new levels in my journey. Yeah. Right. But this rebirth right now that I'm going through, uh-huh. especially with the solar eclipse that just happened. Yeah. And just everything, I just feel like an energy of like 5D rebirth. Like it's a new level. Oh. You know, a level I haven't reached yet. Okay. Yeah. How is that? Is that intimidating or is it fascinating? Is it exciting? Like it sounds like probably all of the things. It feels in perfect alignment. Okay. It feels like um Everything that I've been working for to get to is here. Yeah. And we're like in that season. Yes. Yeah. It's giving. It's giving. Ah! It's giving all the things. And you know what? It's crazy because obviously like you've been in my life since I was, we just as we were toddlers. Like yeah. I remember when you and Lauren used to run away from me in dance class and hide. Like these girls would literally hide from me because I wasn't allowed to hang out. Well, you was not cool enough to hang with us. <laughs> I'm sorry. We love you Dang. now. We love you. We loved you then. <laughs> you, you know? But you hid from me. Okay. We they were like, we ain't rocking with Sarah. Sarah, you was a little, you know, you, we was the older ones you was like the little sister yeah. you know you was like it's kind of stunting our our vibe you know damn i'm just being honest but look at you now girl. <laughs> look at you now we sitting here on your couch yes doing yes. all the things it's giving it's giving <laughs> rebirth come on rebirth i've had a few deaths and births as well in in this life we we know we, we, both, we, we both have and that's what makes it um you know so wild like i remember sleepovers. You know, I remember, um, my, like, I, I just remember so many different things, but your journey is so beautiful and vast and deep and truly like rebirths and deaths and rebirths and deaths and rebirths and deaths I've witnessed and seen. Like, I remember when you had missing posters out mm. for you, mm. girl, you went missing. Mm. People really don't know. They really don't know. Yeah. Do they? <laughs> no, they have no idea. You know, um, my childhood, you know, you mm-hmm. know, childhood was crazy. Yeah. I was all over the place. Um, I had a lot of, my life was in the streets. Yes. Yeah. I was really in the streets. Your mom, bless her heart. <laughs> oh, she was trying to save me. Oh, she was trying to save me. She did a good job though. Her, 
her and my dad, they put a lot of foundation in me that, you know, it's in me now to this day, but definitely in those days, I was wild. Mm-hmm. The people really don't know. Mm-hmm. I was wild. Child. How did you go missing? Well, you know, at that time I was in the gang life. Yeah. Like literal gang. She's not joking. Yeah. I was in the crib. Bandana and everything. Yeah. I yeah. had, I had got, you know, jumped into the gang and mm-hmm. everything. I was fully invested. Mm-hmm. I had to leave home and I was, I was living that life. And, you know, my dad, bless his heart, was always looking for me. Mm-hmm. And I remember, I never saw the posters, but I remember people telling me like, Helen, there's missing posters of you everywhere. Like, you need to go home. What's going on? And I used to just be like, man, I ain't hearing nothing y'all talking about. Mm. Because that was my life. Yeah. I I wrote for that life. I remember. Yeah. You left, though. At this time, you were gone. You were in Edmonton, right? Um, Well, no, that was in Regina. That was in Regina. That was all Regina, Sarah. You just didn't know. You were the baby. I was the baby. You really didn't know what was going on. You yeah. would really have to ask your like mom. <laughs> yeah. Because she'll break it down. She knew. Okay, so for people that are listening and they hear you saying my mom and your dad, mm-hmm. tell me about your mom. Okay, so my mom left at three years old. Mm-hmm. When you were three. When I was three years old, right. So, well, let's backtrack. I was born in Africa, a refugee, mm-hmm. um, during a war. And my parents, uh, we got sponsored by a church family to come to Regina, Saskatchewan. Mm-hmm. Um, when, my, when I was about three years old, my mom ended up leaving my dad one day when he went to a wedding, uh, just completely stripped the house. And um, it was crazy. And yeah, so she wasn't really in my life as a child. And my dad was doing a really his best he could as a single father. And, you know, your mom stepped up a lot Mm. in my life as that mother role. And she, you know, took me in Mm -hmm. and used to always have me over there. And like you said, we was doing the sleepovers. We was doing dance class. Mm -hmm. She was like... She was my mother figure in that part of my life. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm so grateful for her. Let's Mm -hmm. just say that. I'm so grateful for her. (laughs) Me too. Anytime we talk about my mom, you know I'm going to (laughs) cry. Oh, my gosh. Because she's such like an angel sent. Oh, my gosh. She's just angel sent. The amount of people who she's impacted. Mm -hmm. And look at what she's created (laughs) out of all of us. Yeah, yeah. That's her work. Yeah. She's pretty special. Yeah. Shout out to you, mama. Shout out to you. (laughs) So, yeah, during that time in my life, um, things were really crazy. But as much as everybody was trying to help me, I was not hearing it. I was very much stuck in that life. Um, I had a lot of issues from not having my mom, just having abandonment issues, which caused me to attach to a lot of people. I was constantly trying to fit in other people's families Mm. and like just constantly attaching, attaching, attaching. So Mm -hmm. I was stuck to that. Um, At like 13, I went to juvenile. I had gotten in trouble with the cops. Mm-hmm. It got really bad. I was in jail. And um, at that time, my dad made a decision to get me out of Regina. Mm-hmm. That was when I was 13. We actually moved to Ontario first, but we didn't stay there long. I was still wilding out. Um, and at that time, I actually did have contact with my mom. And at that point, I actually went to go live with my mom in Edmonton. Mm -hmm. So when I was 14, I moved to Edmonton with my mom. And, you know, things definitely um, changed for me, but not too – I was still wild. I was still wild. I know. You know, at that point, I was already a teenager. It wasn't really um, easy for my mom to become a mom for me at that time because I already was like – I thought I knew everything. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just kind of like – she was more like a friend energy, you Mm. know? So um, Edmonton was good though. I had, I wasn't as wild in the streets, but I still was in the streets. Mm -hmm. Um, At 15, we came to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. My mom brought me to Atlanta to visit and I fell in love with Atlanta. I knew at that moment when I came to Atlanta, first of all, first of all, for those of y'all who don't know, um, we do not have a lot of black American people in Canada. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you're black in Canada, you're either African, you're Jamaican, um, so, like you're, you're come from some culture, yeah. Asian, yeah. you know, we didn't just have like 
black, black American. American. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. didn't have that, right? So when I first came to Atlanta, it was like I was in a movie. Mm-hmm. I had like a whole culture shock. I remember getting off the plane and being like, oh my God, everybody's black. Yeah, girl. Like everybody. Yeah. It was wild. I remember going in LA because I moved to America when I was 20. You moved when you were 17. Yeah. But when I went to, and when I slipped and fell into entrepreneurship, because I first got into a conservatory in my acting theater academy. Mm -hmm. um, But when I fell into entrepreneurship, it was a white girl that introduced me to her mentor who was black and they invited me to a Gardena Jazz Festival. And that was the first time I had ever seen hundreds of black people. It's like a culture shock. I I had never experienced that before. Yeah. They don't really get that. No. (laughs) No. It's so different. It's so different. Yeah. It's Wait, I have to ask you because you're Canadian and I just need to know, even though you were about that life, have you ever seen The Sounds of Music? Did my mom make you watch The Sounds of Of Music? Of course I've seen Sounds of Music. Girl, that was one of the... Our favorite musicals, musicals ever. Girl, okay. that and Annie Poppins. Yes, Mary Poppins, Mary Poppins and, Poppins Annie. and Annie. Yes, yes. Oh, I literally can sing every song. Annie, Mary Poppins, Sound of Music. Yes. All of that. We, okay, because I just- You know my Canadian is still in me. I do know that. Like, it comes I, out. I do know. And I know my mom had us in there watching all the things. Girl. Girl. Creating choreography and everything. All the- cho- To everything. I swear to God. <laughs> I swear to God. People don't understand. Like, they don't know. No, they don't Mama, know. you did good. You did good. You did good. <laughs> um, okay, so so you came to Atlanta and you saw all these black people and you were like, wow. I had a culture shock and my energy felt so at home. Yeah. I remember people being so nice to me and I just remember thinking like, wow, people are so nice in the South and they're so like warm and, you know, because I got a lot of Southern love when I got here. And uh, I knew at that point when I was 15, I knew that Atlanta was where I was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Like, I knew that. So why do you think you went into gang life, though? Mm. Like, what, like, who was it? How did you get introduced? Like, for the person that's like, I don't want my children to go down this road, what should they be looking out for? Like, how did that even happen? Well... It's hard to really tell someone what to look out for, but I think as children, now now as I look back, now I can like diagnose myself better, right? But back then I have no idea. I think it was just really just trying to fit in and feel loved and mm. feel um just had because I I had love too though so it's like so it's so weird because yeah, I, I had so love mm-hmm. I had a lot of great love from my dad from your mom mm-hmm. a lot of great families that mm-hmm. always supported us um, but I there loved was, you too you just didn't think I was cool for the record but back to you <laughs> yeah you loved me too you loved me um, but yeah so I don't really know what it was in me as a child that kept seeking. Um, these wrong crowds, you know, but I was just, I was attached to that. It was something in me that was very um, troubled. And I believe that that just came from all of the trauma I went through, that Mm. I had a lot of things that I didn't understand. But as a child, I didn't know it came from me not having my mom, Mm. you know? Like Mm -hmm. as I grew up, I started to realize, oh, this is like from your abandonment issues. Mm. This is you not facing what you were going through, like just Mm. trying to fill these voids, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that's what it was. And I think it was boys. Mm. I was like, you know, attracted to, I'm attracted to the wrong boys. Mm -hmm. A lot of women. We like the bad boy. Yeah. Because in a way it kind of makes us feel safe. It does make us feel safe. Yeah. And honestly, I think that is the biggest thing about it because Mm -hmm. you can't feel safe with with somebody who's just not willing to stand on business. (laughs) One you know? thing, one thing about you, I feel like you still like a man that's a little dangerous. I mean, like if you like, mind you, we all, I think all women desire that man that has a little bit of killer in him because at the ultimately we want to know, can you protect us? Yeah. But I still think that that's like high on the level. It's very for you. high on it, the level for me. I will say that, but there's levels to that too. Like he can't be like still like. In the streets. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I definitely um, think that the man that I will be with has to have a level of like 
a journey where maybe he was in the streets mm -hmm. or like a level of like understanding me and what I've been through because if not, we're just not gonna speak the same language, like, you know? Okay, so you... <laughs> Okay. I know what I want to say, but I ain't going to say it on this podcast. Okay. 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 <laughs> Let me just say that the typical nice guy. We don't like nice guys. We don't like nice guys no. because nice guys just, you know, I won't respect him. The no. Same. Because he's a pushover. He's a pushover, which yeah. means anybody can push you over, which means, you know. How are you going to stand for me when you can't stand for you yourself? You can't even stand for yourself. It's in the definition. Agreeable and subtle. Sometimes subtlety and agree, agreeism, agreement is not called for. It's not called for. It's just not. Sometimes you can very kindly stand you can, your ground. You got to stand. If you don't, that's why they say, if you don't, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Period. That's what nice people do. That's what nice people do. Sorry. So for me, I definitely need a man that has a backbone. Yes. You know, he has to, I have to know that, oh, hey, if we're in public and somebody tries me, like, you're going to defend me. But you don't feel like that might get a man killed, especially being in Atlanta? Well, okay. There's, there's parts to it, right? Because we are in 2024 and people are just crazy, crazy these days. For no like, reason. For no reason. Honestly... Honestly, there really isn't too many people out here that I feel live with the same honor and like integrity that we used to have. True. So nowadays it is harder to like just be able to handle your business because people ain't just going to fight and handle it mm -mm. like that. They're going to pull a gun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a tricky thing. As a woman, you definitely have to know when to not put your your man into these type of situations and when it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. And obviously as a successful you know, business owner, and I would assume my man would be this as well, mm -hmm. of course, nah, we ain't got time for that. Mm -hmm. We ain't checking all these things that don't matter. Right. You know what I mean? Yes. But I need to know yes. if it goes down. Are we good? We're good. Yeah. Yeah. I need to know that. Are what if the good? government goes crazy? I need to know yeah. that you're going to defend this household. Yes. You know what I mean? So do you believe in masculinity, femininity, and the spectrums? Like a woman should be more in her feminine than a man, and a man should be more in his masculine? Like that's the dynamic that you desire? Um, to an extent. I don't I don't think that there's complete like gender roles no. in that sense. Okay, yeah. But I do think that it's important for a masculine and a feminine to have their dynamic in their relationship. Like I cannot be masculine to my ma I'm very masculine mm -hmm. in the way I handle a lot of things, mm -hmm. right? Especially my business. Mm -hmm just getting things done. Yeah. That, that's that masculine energy that makes you get out here and get it done. Yes. Right? So of course, even you, we yes. stay in our masculine energy. Period. But with if I our have, man. Yeah. With my man. I am goo. I am literally a baby. Yes. Okay. Baby me, love me. Baby me. I'm, a, I'm my inner child. I'm a cry baby too. I know you are. Like, <laughs> I'm a cry me too. baby. <laughs> we I, are. I want you to be my shoulder let yeah. me cry on your shoulder yeah you know like yeah. let me be in my feminine because if i can't be in my feminine if i can't be in my feminine and i have to be in my masculine then i'm gonna lose my respect for you because mm -hmm. now you're almost in the space of being like an employee to me if i if i have to tell you oh. what to do you know what i mean and you're not telling me or we're not doing this together in yeah. a space like of okay, this is what we're going to do. And you're like leading that space. Yeah. If I have to take lead all the time. Then you ain't for me. You ain't for me. I agree. You know, I feel like leadership is something that I am very serious about. And if I don't, if I'm not clear that you're clear on where you're going, I just could never. I could never. Mm -mm. Now, that doesn't mean that you have all the answers because obviously we know inside of entrepreneurship, things are up and down, things are shifting, pivots happen. But do you understand that you need to pivot when it's time to pivot? And let's be also very clear. That doesn't mean that um, my man has to come already built. Oh, would you take a man from scratch? So I wouldn't take a man from scratch, but I say that to say that I have built. Oh, I'm done building men. I, I don't from want, scratch for sure. I don't want to build anybody, but from I want to build with my partner. But I'm willing to build with my partner. Yes, but not from scratch. Not from scratch. We ain't starting at zero. Nah. And I, I hate when that. people when people are like, "Okay, is this thing on?" <laughs> <clears throat> 
me, me, me. This is the thing that drives me crazy, okay? Men will be like, well, why wouldn't you date a man that makes $60,000 a year? Because I don't have to. Why would you date a man that makes $100,000 a year? Because I don't have to. You don't. If I have to submit to your leadership, I need to know that you're going somewhere. And my desire, now, if you, to me, that's scratch. Like that's starting from scratch. And that doesn't make anyone a bad person. That doesn't mean that they're not qualified to have great things in their life. It just means I'm in a place in my life where I'm not choosing that to build anymore. Right. Right. Now, if you come a little more, you know, you've done more, you've worked on yourself, you've worked on your business, you've worked on all of those things, then absolutely we could build. I could turn one million into three, three into five, five into 10. Fact. That's easy. I could turn 500,000 into a million, a million into three, three into five, five into 10. I could turn, I may be dependent on, on, on the, the person, you yeah. know, where they at. Yeah. Realistically speaking, a quarter of a million, I could really do a lot with a quarter of a million, Absolutely. right? But when we start talking about the numbers of qualifications, and this is a part that's frustrating too, it's not like I can put a number on it because some people have an essence where income isn't even necessarily required because of the relationships that they have. Period. So it doesn't make sense to say, oh, my man has to make half a million dollars a year. Well, what if the person making $100,000 a year has relationships where they get free trips, where they get free clothes, where people want to see them in their bags, in their shoes, where people want them to speak on their stages, where people want to put them in proximity to other powerful people. Well, that person might be a little more valuable than the person that makes half a million, but doesn't know what to do with half a million and spends $500,001. Your act, that man is actually doing worse than this other person over here. Period. So I don't think we can put a number on it. But when I say from scratch, I'm not just talking about monetary. I'm talking mentally, emotionally, yes. physically, spiritually, financially, and energetically. Are you in a place where you feel good, but you're ready for more? Because exactly. that's where I'm at. Yeah. Because it's all I feel about great. their ambition. Yes. It's about their their grind, their 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 vision. Where yes. are they going? Yes. What are you doing? Because for me, even me, it's it's like if I came across a man that was making, say, a hundred or two hundred thousand a year, but I could tell that he is on the the path and he's clear with his purpose and he's clear with his vision, mm-hmm. then I can work with that. I can absolutely be like, okay, I see where he's going mm-hmm. and I see his determination. Let me see how I can help him multiply this, mm-hmm. right? Because as the feminine energy, we come and we multiply everything we touch. Yeah. So if, as long as you're on the path, then I can help you multiply. But if you're not on the path and you're just drifting, dead weight, living day to day, then I can't, de- I can't build with that. Actually, you're going to throw me off. You're you weighing me down. My whole energy off, yeah. my whole balance. Mm-hmm. Because now I'm being pulled into all your distractions of things that are not aligned. And and now you're pulled into your masculine, which is where we don't thrive. Nope. It's exhausting for us to be in our masculine. It is. It is exhausting because it's naturally that's not what we do. We do it out of necessity, not out of desire. But when we can just be, it, there's nothing more powerful. We heard a, um, a quote today that said like, you can't outwork a good woman. No. Nope. You can't outwork divine feminine. You nope. can't because there's certain things divine feminine women, good women, just bring in their essence. In the essence. It's literally just in the aura and just by being near a divine feminine woman, yes. that is going to bless amplify you. you, bless you, yes. bring all of the energy that you need to see vision. Mm-hmm. We are the vision. Yes. You know what I mean? Sometimes ma- a man needs the right woman just to get motivated, to get that vision. Yeah. You know, and that's cool if you don't have the vision yet, but I'm going to need you to get that together before you come over here. Uh, period. <laughs> <laughs> On everything. Yeah. And, and you know, I feel like a lot of the times people, people like there's so many talks inside of society talking about like how much money does a man need to make and we have responsibilities. And that's all very true. And I think that the answer to it is really just identifying what do you need? Yeah. Like you can't count on social media to tell you how much money your man needs to make. You've just got to do it. You know what? Hmm. On some real, I hate all this talk about a high value man do and you? high value woman. Why? I think it's a bunch of crap. Do you? Oh, absolutely. Break that down. First of all, somebody is not high value because of how much money they have. No, that's high earning. Okay, but that's the that is the 
theme of everything going on in the internet. Oh, if you want to get a high value man, they're talking about high earning men. That is what the stereotype is of what a high value man is. But what do you think a high value man is? A high value man is a God fearing man, Mm -hmm. a man that has a plan, Mm -hmm. a man that is clear with his direction, Mm -hmm. somebody who can lead Mm -hmm. uh, 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 an entire empire, a Mm -hmm. kingdom, Mm -hmm. right? If you, just because you make good money doesn't mean you're high value. I agree with you. I know lots of people who make money that are lost as heck. I know a lot of people that make a lot of money and they broke on the inside. And they have no integrity. They have nothing but money. Literally. And they have horrible lives. Yeah. And I would never want to be with a person like that. Never. Just because, oh, the streets respect him or because they got money. But they don't respect him. They don't respect him at all. They they invite him around because the flash that he has to buy in order to be relevant is useful to people that want that person to be around. Exactly. So it's, it's, they play in themselves. They play in themselves. Every relationship around them is fake. Yeah. 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 And it's like, why would I ever want to be with somebody like that? No. No. I, I actually steer very much. I know you have. Mm-hmm. I know. And it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Hey. Because sometimes we make choices based on the potential we see in people. Yeah. And or s- the facade that they present themselves Absolutely. as. Absolutely. The facades that they present the facades themselves The facades be facade. Ooh, the facades be facade, girl. Girl. And, and and the thing is with women like us, yeah. though, who are really tapped in, the facade won't last that long. It doesn't. And that's why the relationship doesn't last long. Yeah, because you we'll can only see through that. And you know, I can honestly say, I think back to one of my past relationships, and I know that you know the relationship I'm talking about. Um, I think back to that relationship, and it's like literally within you know, we got really serious really fast yeah. because based off of the information, he was showing me, I have this lead, yeah. I have this lead. He didn't actually have any lead. Yeah. And then the craziest part is when I saw how much of a lead he didn't have and I understood that it was a facade, it started to erode my respect and my trust. So much. At which point now with him, I'm getting more into my masculine because he's getting more into his feminine. He doesn't, he's not decisive. He's no. not clear. He doesn't have leadership. Like there are so many different things about this person and that doesn't make him a bad person no it just means he's not the person for me exactly right and so it's it's crazy to me because I feel like in that relationship there are things that I've said to him that I haven't said to any man in my adult relationships yeah because I stopped respecting him I know like and you know I know you know for real for real you know and and not even like I never called anybody out of their name or like but I, there were things that for me where I hold my man at such a high level of respect. Now I'm looking at you like, mm. 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 like you not what you said you was. Mm-mm. And I can't even take you serious. I can't. No. And now I'm I, I'm subconsciously moving that way. Yeah. And I'm because questioning I can't everything fake it. about you Everything. Now. Because now everything that is a facade about you is showing me, oh, I don't even know if anything that come out your mouth is real. Facts. Like, I can't trust nothing you say. Period. And I definitely can't let you lead me. Period. What is we talking about? Gotta go. Gotta go. Got to and, go. And then you talking about birthing, like, not with him. Obviously, we didn't get there. But it's like, these are the things you have to look out for in your relationships because people be birthing children with these people. You know, and I think a lot of times people don't think about this when they're in relationships because they're so caught up by the facade. But then it's like, oh, this is going to be the parent to your child. Mm. This is who you're going to mold another human with in Mm. this realm. Like, what are y'all creating? You know what I mean? No, we need to be more intentional with what we're creating and who we're laying with and who we're aligning with Mm -hmm. and all of that. So I have to ask you because one of the things that you said was king and empire. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes in different cultures and religions, kings will have multiple wives. This is true. Do you believe in a poly lifestyle? Um. It's a tricky question. Okay. Okay. So I've never done a poly relationship at all. Um. But I'm open to the conversation in the sense of other cultures. Okay. okay. In America, I think it's a joke. I think that yeah, people, people are out here just wanting to have multiple partners, but people really don't understand the foundation of having a poly relationship. Yeah. So in other cultures, a lot of times, especially in African cultures, like when a man would take a second wife, um, not in Muslims. Muslims, this is their tradition. They can have multiple wives. But mm-hmm. for instance, in my culture, if, say, 
a husband dies, right? Like say if I if you're ma- if I'm married and my husband dies, it's culture that his brother would marry me even if he's already married. They would marry me and bring me into that family cuz mm-hmm. now they're going to take care, take of, care of me as right. a family, right? And now I become a part of that family and we're building an empire together, mm-hmm. right? So in realistic talk, the idea of poly relationships is supposed to be to build an empire together. Mm-hmm. So if I'm bringing another person into our relationship, the purpose is what, how can this person bring value in our relationship? That's the question. And how can this help build this empire yes. together? Yes. Okay. Yes. It's not about a man having multiple women. Yes. Or even a woman having multiple men. This yeah. is not what this is about. It's about building the village. It's about building the village. Yes. But you know what? I, I actually was just having this conversation. I was talking to mom about Polly the other day. Uh-huh. You know, I talk to mom about everything. I'd be I like, know. mama, I know. what's your take on? I know. <laughs> we were having a conversation and I was like, yeah, so, um, you know, poly relationships. She said, oh, well, it's illegal in the United States. And I said, what do you mean? She said, you can't have multiple wives or multiple husbands in the United States. It's illegal. Well, you can't be married legally. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like you can't legally be married. That's what I should say. This you can't true. legally be married to multiple people in the United States. This is true. So, if, if that's the case, you marry the first person and the others you just make contractual agreements with in Correct. true poly relationships. Correct. So if you have contractual agreements with people, that means there are roles that need to be filled. Period. So for me, when I start thinking about poly, because I've said this since the beginning of time. Well, not since the beginning of time. I've said this since I've become an adult. Right. A, 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 an aware adult. I don't feel as though a man having sex with another woman means that he loves me less. I don't. I think just that don't either. feel that way at all. I've I, and it's been a long time that I've been saying that. I, it's a it's a normal trait of a masculine. Period. Yeah, it's in the animals. It's in everybody. Like they, that's, except for penguins. Okay, except penguins, for penguins mate for life. Oh. They're monogamous with one person. One <laughs> penguin. Yeah. Oh my god. There's a song I just called penguin. Yeah, there's a song. It's like you're my penguin. Like because oh. you're my one for life. Okay, I love that. Yeah, and they never they but never not have anyone else. It's not realistic. Well, I mean, it is because penguins do it, and they never mate again. But when I don't know if it's realistic in human. I mean, it is realistic because it happens every day. However, not it the point. It happens to their thought, to the naked eye, but we don't really know what happens every day in no, anybody's relationship. I think, there's, I think there are so many faithful men out here. I really do. Is that the most common thing? Probably not. But I think there are so many faithful, loyal men inside of their so relationships. I think so too, but I think that comes to, that comes at a certain age. Like, so if Sometimes. we're talking about the human as a, as a human, we we evolve, right? We go through so many years. We go through so many relationships. We go through so many loves. Yeah. Everybody, it's very not typical that one person ends up being with the first person they're with True. for the rest of their life. True. That never happens. So I if mean, we look at if we look at the actual breakdown of how many partners we've had in our lives, how many like loves we've had, I don't think it was meant for us to always be with one person. Mm. I, Are I, we supposed to end maybe with one person? Possibly that's maybe what is supposed to happen. But I do believe on our journeys, we go through many rebirths. We go through many deaths. And in and each cycle, that can also include different loves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I I agree with you. And I also am open to all of the things. Like maybe it is yeah. one person for life. Maybe not. And that's why I'm saying it really goes back to you knowing what's right for you. Yeah. Right? Like you're in integrity with yourself. But it's it's crazy to me because I start thinking about the roles. Do I want to cook every day? No. No, I don't. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner? No. Do I want, do, I don't clean my house now. You know, what do I look you like? You would love a sister wife. What? You would love I'm it. just saying. And we, and we best friends. Yeah. Like, girl, you get, you get your night a week. No, this is the thing. My, <laughs> then where my ego, this is where my ego comes in. <laughs> the part about Polly that's got me jacked up is that, like, we're equal. But it's not always like that. It always depends on your dynamic and how you build your home. And is it also like, everybody's like publicly, home is not like everybody that. knows that we're poly? Because that's another thing, too. I couldn't publicly, sorry, mom, I probably shouldn't even be saying these things out loud. I don't know that I could publicly be poly. I don't know if I could publicly um, announce a second wife. I get what you're saying yeah. in that space. 
but or a I third could, or a fourth or any of that. I don't. Th- I definitely don't think I would need a third or a fourth if I did welcome an, another woman in the space. Uh-huh. And I definitely think it would be more towards, like you just said, like the uh, like what's the purpose of this? What like value how do is, you bring? Yeah, what value is this going to bring to our you, family? Is it money? Is it is it is it, is it traditional time? feminine is it, roles? Is, are you a tutor to the children? Right. Are you going to clean? Are you going to have business ideas? Are you a connector that brings amazing relationships? Yeah. Are you the person that pours milk in my bubble bath and right. drops rose petals to help me relax? What is it? What is it? But then it makes me think: like, do I want a sister wife or do I want a servant? Ah! <laughs> Well, see, that's is that, why, is that terrible? No, it's not terrible because actually, if we go back again to African cultures and things like where this stuff actually started, yeah. most of the times the sister wives or the second wife is the nanny. It is the nanny. She's the servant. Sign me She's up. She's the servant. I mean, and I don't mean to say that in that way because, like, no, being a servant we're is not beautiful. the servant. We but are servants we're servers. Too. Actually, feminine energy is, is here to serve. I agree. So, some women actually are very complete in that space, being able to just serve. Yeah. You know, so for some women, they might like that role. Like, if they're like, oh, yeah, I would absolutely be honored to just serve you guys yeah. or be a part of this family and see how I can add value. Okay, maybe. Maybe that can make sense, you know? But then again, even for that to work, I think before anything like that can work, the foundation has to be solid Solid. with like you and your partner first. Before anybody can bring other energies in. And that man, that man has to be so solid and so emotionally available because a lot of these men they're not emotionally available that's the biggest problem if Mm -hmm. you can't even be emotionally available for me Mm -hmm. how you supposed to bring another how you gonna have a whole nother woman in the play yeah you gonna create wars yeah you gonna have us hating each other yeah i had a person that made me do that too i didn't even know this girl never met this girl and i had beef with this girl you know because of the stuff that he used to say about her yeah ain't that something because some of these men will use it to like um, like narcissists, like yeah. talk bad about sh- about you to, to her, her and her to me. Well, sorry, the opposite. They'll talk good about her to you, like mm. oh, why you can't be like her? Oh, she does this. That oh, is da 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 da. Behavior, very narcissist, mm-hmm. and they will have you feeling so insecure about yourself mm-hmm. to the place where you think nobody would even want you anymore, or whatever. And now you in this. Now you're living your life in competition. Yeah, you're living your life trying to prove yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That is not it's like, harmony. No, I was born worthy, okay? Period. You got the wrong one. I had an ex that used to say, you really think you're like up here, don't you? Oh, why? Because you're trying to bring me down here? My answer is no. I don't subscribe to that story. Never have, never will. I was born worthy. And Period. if you can't treat me like the queen that I am, get to step in. Yeah. You know, and, and it was crazy because in hindsight, in the moment, there were so many of these little like attack moments that I didn't see as attacks yeah. at all. But in hindsight, you know, when when things start going one way or another, everything starts to be like, you know, come to the forefront of all the things that was happening. And it's yes. like, yo, this man really tried to break me for real. Yeah. But I know me. Yeah. But if I didn't know me, you probably would have broke me. Absolutely. You, you know what I mean? Have. And and people really be doing that. And that's true narcissism. You, yeah. You already know I went through the worst narcissist, toxic I do. relationship. I, I with- ended. And you know, that man, boy, he used to make me think- You were crazy. I was crazy. I was crazy. I remember. You know? And see, men like that, they will really make you feel very alone and like you can never do any of the things without them. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing. So it's like, yeah, you can't build with men like that. No. They will take your whole- Soul. And you know what? What I've realized about narcissists, like a true narcissist, because we all have narcissistic traits, Absolutely. right? There are parts of, of being a narcissist that are essential to being successful, Absolutely. right? You have to think that you're important. You have to um, want certain things. Like, like it, it just yeah, is what it is. There's a healthiness. There to is. It a there is bit. some healthiness to some narcissistic traits. However, when it starts to go dark, 
You have to be mindful that a true narcissist doesn't go for the woman or the man that has low Mm self-esteem, that has, um, you know, self-doubt, that has self-hate. They go for the person that loves themselves because it's all a, it's a, it's a task. It's It's, a game. It's, I want to see, can I break this person down? I want to shoot for the highest person so that I could break this person down. And that's why, you know, in one of the relationships that I had, it really didn't last long because- you've got to know you. Yeah. You can't break something. I've already done all the mending. Yeah. I broke myself down yeah. and built myself back up. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. when I'm in integrity with me, what you have to say about me is not the, tr- it's not my truth. It it's might be your truth, truth mm-hmm. but that is not my truth. So I think that, you know, narcissists, narcissistic gaslighting, all of these things, like people don't understand the mental and emotional, it's almost worse than physical. And we both experienced oh, physical abuse, but that the mental and emotional abuse that happens yeah, it's with deep. these people. It's deep. Like I low key started to be like, am I not cute with no makeup on? No, I get it. It's I, so like deep. there's they so many make you think everything about yourself is bad. bad. Yeah. And thank God that you are strong enough to like get yourself out of those Places. We are strong enough. Yeah. yeah thank thank God mm-hmm. we are strong enough. I, at one point, was not strong enough. You know, mm. I went through that situation up for and years. down for years. Almost seven years I was in that relationship. I, I was going through abuse. Yeah. I was, you know, he cheated on me. He mm-hmm. had a baby on me. Like, oh my God. Like, what was wrong with me when I look back, right? But- the truth is when you're in these spaces it, and you you love this person, you try so much to see the good in this person and mm. you almost don't want to believe that that's what you're in. Like you don't even want it. People, you'll, you'll see the signs and you'll be like, no, that's not him. Like not, like, not, no. Yeah. No. no. Couldn't be. You know, and you'll talk yourself out of it. Oh, no one lies as much to themselves as they do to anyone else. Oh my God. Just the biggest liars. Yeah. So it really takes, I think, getting to a place of um, doing that shadow work, like like what you said, knowing yourself, really know. Like for me, I, I know so many people tried to get me out of that relationship and it never happened until that day, you know, and I was like, it was a me thing. Mm-hmm. It was totally a me thing. I had to look myself in the mirror that day and like, okay, Helen is this really going to be your life? Mm -hmm. Like, is this what you're going to continue to accept, you Mm -hmm. know? And that was a real moment with myself. Mm -hmm. Like you said, because we lie to ourselves so much. So I had to stop lying to myself and I had to face it and really make that decision that I wanted more for me, Yeah, you know? And it's hard to stop lying to yourself when you may not even know the truth when you've been gaslit enough. Exactly. So now you got to unlearn, take away all of those lies that someone else told you, exactly. but you started to think were your reality. It actually reminds me, I don't know if you remember, but I spoke, um, I keynoted at this success seminar in Orlando. You came with me. Yeah. And, um, you know, after you speak, there's like a lineup. Everyone wants to take pictures yes. with you, tell you their story, whatever, whatever. And I speak from my story and I talked about how I was, I was almost paralyzed with my first ex-fiance. Yeah. And I remember, and this lives rent-free in my mind. A girl came up to me. I don't even remember her name. I just remember she was a Caucasian woman. She had a, like a, a red, Mm -hmm. red hair. And she came up to me and she said, you know, I really resonated with what you said. I'm going through that right now Mm. with my partner Mm. and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, um, I said, oh, you're not ready to leave yet. And she said, excuse me. I said, oh, you're, you're not ready to leave yet. You don't have to. And I said, you don't have to tell me that you're leaving. You need to tell you that you're leaving. Period. And she was like, she was like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave. But everything that she was saying was very much still protective of them was very much still. I'm in this, not I'm out of it. It was, exactly. it was very much like, I, I know it because I've been in it, me you too. know? And so when that happened, it was probably a year and a half later that this girl sent me a message on Instagram. And she said, I don't know if you remember me, mm. but you told me that I wasn't going to leave my my abusive partner. And I, I did get emotional just thinking about it. And I just wanted you to know that I just left, <gasps> you know? And it was like, it was like this moment of like, like, oh, now you told you. Now you told you. Yeah. Like yeah. now it's serious for you. And yeah. I feel like, uh, and I know I'm such a crybaby, but it's, okay. it's like I'm when people do, too. here's a Q-tip if you need one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but literally like we, like in that moment of the, the success seminar, um, in that moment, it was very much, um, 
I'm going to leave him. I'm no. And it's no, okay. She wasn't ready. And that's okay. Yeah. Because we all have our journey. Yeah. And my job is not to sit here and judge you, but it is to be honest with you. Yeah. When you're ready, you'll be ready. Don't, don't, don't sell me a story. Don't baby. gaslight me. Yeah. Baby. Cause like, I ain't falling for it. You got to stop lying to you. Yeah. And you got to make that decision and you got to put yourself first and you got to build yourself back up. Yeah. Period. How did you build? Because you've been through so much. I mean, yeah. so much. <laughs> and I ain't going to bring you. I ain't bringing nothing up. If you want to bring <laughs> up some stuff, you can. But you've been through so much. How did you build your, like who, no one would have thought you'd be this multiple six figure earning tax offices in different states, mm-hmm. uh, big brick and mortar business <laughs> owning. You employ m- so many people. Like you are out here, you're changing children's lives around the world. You're giving back to organizations. Orphanages. You're you're literally doing so many of these things, and I swear to God, this woman right here is so different from that woman that went missing on I the posters. Know. Oh, I know. How did you get through and grow through that part of your life? Well, I mean, first and foremost, God. Mm-hmm. Period. Mm-hmm. God. It's so many times I should have been dead, girl. Where I'm like, God wow, like how did, how am I still here? Mm -hmm. You know? So all glory goes to God first and foremost, because period. Um, But mostly, you know, after that relationship was when a big shift happened for me. That was like, I feel like when I finally um, had that like aha moment that I was no longer wanting to be a victim I no longer wanted to allow my story to be in survival mode. Mm. I no longer wanted to keep trying, you know, to just figure it out. Um, You know, when I came here at 17, I was illegal. Mm -hmm. So I've been an illegal immigrant for what? I was 10 years illegal. Mm -hmm. So around that time when I was in that relationship, that was a, a lot of... Um, my self doubt, right? I always felt like, oh my God, what am I going to do? I can't go get a job. I can't go do this. And that was a lot of my, like, my weaknesses, I felt like at the time. So one of the main things I had to do was just decide I wasn't going to be a victim no more. Mm. That was the biggest thing. I had to make that choice that, okay, nobody's going to save me. I'm not a victim. Nobody owes me nothing. And if I want my life to change, I got to change it. Yeah. You know? So, um, and actually you helped me a lot at that time Mm. when you kind of slipped me into entrepreneurship, Mm -hmm. you know? And um, that was, I think, the first, that was like my first light, I think, Mm. Uh, you know, coming out of that darkness was just that, you know, we started doing the network marketing and being surrounded in that, just the energy of like, other people who were like just so happy Mm -hmm. and just so motivated Mm -hmm. and constantly like pouring into us and like constantly telling us about like what we, that was so important for me on my journey because that was what introduced me to personal development. Mm -hmm. And when I started doing personal development, Ooh, baby, you want to tell me nothing. Okay. Like personal development empowered me on another level that it was like, okay, I can change my mindset. I can really reprogram who I am. And I started really um, tapping into Dr. Joe Mm -hmm. Dispensa. Mm -hmm. You know, that's my guy. My guy too. Y'all don't know. You better find out. You better find out because that man really, ooh, he taught me things that I was like, oh, I can reprogram every freaking wire in my bone. Like, you know, none of this is... um, It's not, doesn't have to stay the same chapter, right? So I started doing a lot of personal development. Um, On my journey, I started traveling. Mm -hmm. Traveling was a big thing for me. It really, really, I believe that traveling can help people expand their vision on a way that, you know, it's like we've talked about this before. Like if somebody's never heard of Japan Mm -hmm. and I'm talking to them about Japan, Mm -hmm. it's like they can't even comprehend it because the vision is like, blank, you know? So being able to travel really opened my eyes to just how blessed I was, Mm -hmm. how, um, how fortunate I was and just like coming in a space of more gratitude, Mm -hmm. um, which is so key on our journey. Like, 
an attitude of gratitude, baby, will take you so far. Yes. Um, so I believe I genuinely just started putting my frequency on a higher vibration, yeah. you know? And as I was doing that, um, I feel like God started putting me in alignment with the right mentors I needed. I started meeting different mentors, different people that were teaching me more about like, tapping into my spirituality, my divine feminine, the power within me, and that I could control that and that I have, like, I'm a co-creator in mm -hmm. this world. Like, ladies, if y'all don't know, we are literally co-creators to the most high in this realm. Mm -hmm. We are portals mm -hmm. for life in this realm. So there's like literally nothing we can do. Like, what can't we do? Nothing. We can do anything we want. Literally. And once you believe that and you know that and you know the power in yes. you, like, nothing can stop that. Yes. And you have to be okay with people not being okay with you knowing Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Because people want you to stay controllable. Because humans are human. Yes. And humans are low are vibrational by very nature. Very low vibrational. Yeah. And it takes, um, see, a lot of people don't understand that when we talk about the word Christ, mm -hmm. it's actually, we're going into our Christ consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so when you learn more about your spirituality and how the names of things, you'll start to understand all of these terms have been like subliminally put out there, but they're actually hiding you from reaching the true Christ mm -hmm. consciousness, mm -hmm. which is your highest version, which is being in your highest vibration so that you can actually receive your downloads from the most high so mm -hmm. that you can actually like live your life how you're supposed to mm. because right now we're on a lot of humans are living their life in a vibration of what society has told them to do which is not very much it's low vibrate negativity 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 it's so low yeah. you're you're constantly busy doubt being fear busy, overwhelmed doing nothing yeah you know and because of that we've lost uh a lot of people have lost their connection yeah. to the divine source. Yeah. So they're just lost and they're just constantly living their life and they wonder why they feel depressed and they wonder why they're always in a low vibrational, but it's coming from, from every direction, yeah. you know? So yeah, for me, it was just really being intentional. I don't listen to any rap music no more. You know, you know, I listen, shout out to my girl, Tony Jones. Oh okay. you know? Because uh, she helped me so much. Oh my God. I used to listen to Tony Jones. Every day when I left that relationship on repeat, every day, her she makes affirmation, empowerment music, mm -hmm. and um, her music really helped me along with all the other things I was doing to just like reprogram my mind and just... That was just a start. And where do we go from there? Now, honey, I got travel with a purpose retreats. Mm -hmm. So I I really learned the 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 value of taking people to just see other countries and like opening their eyes to the vision and um, travel with a purpose. We go to the orphanage. Mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, we give back and it's a very fulfilled feeling. And I think that a lot of people are just missing that fulfillment of life. Yep. Because they're not really doing anything with purpose, mm -hmm. you know? So I've just surrounded myself with more things that are on purpose. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I love it. I'm here for it. Oh, God, we have to switch gears, and I'm so sad about it, but we have to switch gears here. Okay. This is the part of the show where we talk about it's giving versus it's giving. So I'm going to give you a scenario, and based on the scenario, you tell me it's giving something negative or positive based on the options that I give you. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> here we go. Okay, so let's say you are in a whirlwind of a romance. You meet a man and he is just, it's giving all the things. He's romantic. He's chivalrous. He's successful. He has a nice house. He drives a nice car. And then you go to his house and you find out that he's broke. He bought everything on credit. So he has crazy debt, but he's mm. really trying to make an impression on you. It's giving... Baby, I thought you were going, but you're not. I got to go. Or it's giving, oh, maybe I can help him get better and grow mm. and evolve. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. Um, it's giving. It's giving I'm out of here. 
Um, no, let me be real. Okay, so hold on. Because the, the scenario is like, hold on. Okay, so you're saying he went and got all this stuff for me? No. For or that was just like, he's just living life. his life like he's that. He's living his life like oh, that. Oh, yeah, no, nah, baby, I'm gone. Yeah. I'm gone. Yeah. There's not there's not really much I could do to help. I mean, now listen, I do credit. I yeah. could get the credit fixed. We could get the credit fixed. We could get you on the right path. But it's giving um the leadership and the decisions that you made leading to this mm. are very questionable. Yeah. So could I really trust that if I did that and I got you on the right path, that you wouldn't mess everything up again? Yeah, it, it's giving you need validation. Yeah, it's giving it's giving you're not very wise. Yeah. You know? Definitely. It's agree. giving you should have took that like I'm not saying there's anything wrong with running credit. You should use other people's money, but you should be using it to build, build a business empires. or to do something to build. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's giving you could never lead me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you and I agree. I'm in full agreement. Okay, okay. Next question. You ready? Okay. Okay. Let me get it together. Okay. Good. Yep. We, here we go. Good. You meet a man. Uh huh. And he is hard. Like, I mean, he's got the swag going, he's got that street cred going. You know, he is building a business. He doesn't make a lot of money, but he's got crazy potential. Um, and he wants to bring you somewhere really nice. So he brings you to a beautiful five-star, uh, restaurant. And when the waiter comes, he orders a peanut nor. It's giving, oh, my baby's so rough around the edges. Oh, baby. Or it's giving, I cannot be embarrassed like this in public. Ah. It's giving my baby's a little rough on the edge. Okay, okay. It's giving. Let me teach him a little bit. Yeah, he's got to travel a little. Cool. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help expand his his, his mindset. Yes, okay. and, and expose him to new things, new tastes, new life. Yeah. you know. Yeah, I do. As long as the potential's there, and he's trying, and I feel like he's genuinely like I could see him leading me, and he's not like out here making stupid choices. Yeah. Maybe maybe he doesn't know what a Pinot Noir is. Then, That's okay. You probably don't know what Pinot Noir is. Yeah. Most, most real... Most real ones ain't drinking no wine, okay? They gonna be like, where the henny? <laughs> right. Where the henny, boo? So when did that become the black drink? That's been the black drink. But why? That and well, like, okay, and so Crown we Royal go back to history. It's like old school. Let's go back to the history. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you know history, real history. Of alcohol? Of alcohol. I don't. Okay, so... If you go back into the like, now don't quote me, y'all. But <laughs> um, if we go back, I believe that um, the person who made brown liquor was black. He was a slave. Okay. And, and they started with like whiskeys and um, like Crown Royal type drink. All brown. Like like what are those called? Browns. Like Cogn cognacs. Cognacs. Exactly. So I believe that that started with black people. Yeah. You know, like they made the actual We made everything. We made everything. Yeah. yeah. So that was ours. And um I think that's why we probably started drinking it. I don't know if that's why we still do in this century. Yeah, I got questions. I got questions. You know, my my mom my mom but mm. actually let me just say this for the people, Hennessy is very bad for you. It's mm. all sugar and it's really bad. And if you're gonna drink, you're better off just, you know, drinking tequila. tequila. Straight. Yeah, straight tequila. Um and even like a, a whiskey is better, like like a straight <sighs> um, whiskey, like a I'll do a whiskey. Like, I don't drink no more, but yeah. I used to do. I would do like a, a mule. That's good. A little whiskey with some um, ginger beer. Do you remember you know? Wisers from back home? Yes. Do you guys know what they Wisers don't have is? Wisers, I don't think. Oh my god! So back in the those. day, if our teenage years, by the way, you're legal in Canada. Some places eighteen, 18 others baby, nineteen. We was yeah, I left at seventeen. Though, so I don't girl, know I was, I was, I was in the clubs at fifteen. I though. was in the club at <laughs> at what fifteen, sixteen. I stole Lauren's ID. Girl, like, let was, me in this we joint. Was living, okay? see y'all living my best life. People really don't know that when you come from a small town, you're actually more lit because when you're in a small town, there's way less to do. You got to figure and it we out. We do everything. We did. We figured it. 
it out. <laughs> Girl, I remember taking shots of Wisers before we would go to like the the club that you danced at for young kids. It was like the young kid club. Or yeah. even the girl the club. club. We, and this is back when people actually danced, okay? This is where I was on a speaker, two feet off the ground, level. sweating my life away. It's not I like didn't that no care about being cute. Now, look at these little heifers. You That's just why go we don't go to, to the club somewhere? no more no, because what? what is going on? It's boring. Like what? Like like this. It is, used to be like a uh, rites of passage to take your shoes off at the, at end, the end, of end of the night because you danced your life. Nowadays, away. I can't even take my shoes nope. off because I got to worry about somebody recording me. Yeah, and being like can't oh, do is it. Is that Helen walking in with her shoes? Yeah, that's Sweat my Helen. Hair out. Damn, can what? I just party? <laughs> can Sweat I have a good time? My hair out, leave with an afro. It was a whole thing. People don't dance, no but more. I remember I can't drink whiskey because of Wisers. You know what did me like that? Vodka in Regina. That either Southern Comfort. Oh, that's Lauren's drink. Oh, that's such a Canadian thing. I remember this is a story I should not tell, but I'm gonna tell it. (laughs) Okay, I'm just gonna keep it real with y'all. This is the thing. Do you remember my 21st birthday in Vegas? Oh my God, we were lit, y'all. We were lit, and let's just put it on the record that we had my auntie and uncle, her mom and dad, with us, and we was lit with our parents. Like, do you remember (laughs) dad literally carrying me out out of the the club club (laughs) over his shoulder? Okay, over y'all were lit, but I was way more lit. I threw up on the outside of the truck. Oh my god, it got all crusted when the when the truck pulled up the next day. First of all, y'all put me in the bath. I will never forget this. Although I kind of don't even really remember all the way, y'all put me in the bathtub. Sprayed me down without with wrapping my on. hair. Girl, I woke up naked in the bed the next day. I was like, where am I? Who am I? What is going on? Please, God, don't. And then I look over. Oh, there's shit. you and Lauren. <laughs> oh, my God. That was such a fun time. That's back when I did I the had splits. Pictures. I was just about to say, I had pictures of you doing the splits coming down the escalator when we was like at Caesar Palace Whoa. or something. Oh, I don't even know God. what casino we was at. I'm girl. just so grateful that back in our day, Phones didn't do. Yeah. Like, not everyone's trying to to capture everything. I'm not trying to be on the internet. It's so weird now. Like, people don't know how how to have fun. Real fun. Like, I feel really sorry for this generation. I actually always say, like, I, like, let's take, let's even talk about the love, the love music. Okay. There is none. There is none. And where's the next classic love movie? What do these kids lose their virginity to? Sexy red. What the heck? It's so sad. I'm very worried. Yes. It is concerning. It's concerning. I don't have kids yet, and I just don't know. If love I do, let me have a boy. Love is the medicine, y'all. We I just want a classic love, love movie. Back. But people don't even want love. They say they do, but like they don't really want to see it. We have to bring it back. They just want to see it so they can hate on it. No, I know. Ain't that something? It's wild. Ain't gonna see my love. My love's top secret. Take me back to the nineties. That's okay? the type of love I Take got. Take me back where you know everybody was very proud of their woman or their man in private. Top secret. <sighs> you'll know. You'll know. You'll know. And if you know me, you'll know. If you don't know me for real, you'll have no idea. It's the men's fault. What you mean? It's the men's fault that society is like this, I feel like. What you mean? They have put the standard out of, of what? what they want with, like, all the fake facades. I don't think they want that, though. But they put the standard out. Like, they want that, I you don't know? think they do. But they do it in the music. They do it But it's it all a in, lie. That's why we yeah, don't Yeah, that's why about. I say it's their fault. They have mm-hmm. to go back to being like they were in the 90s. Like, in the 90s, we saw natural girls in the music videos. Period. We saw girls like, you know, Aaliyah, Le- Regina. Um, Period. What's her name? You know, everybody was real natural. Girls were in the gym. Girls were like, you know... Yeah, they yeah. were in the gym. Yeah. We used to use like we used to wear just regular jeans with little crop tops, and that yeah. was that was such a fly I, girl. I still dress like that. I do too. Like I'm a nineties girl all, all day. day, all day, all day. Kenny, I don't know if you can answer this, but I'm gonna ask you because <laughs> I know you practically married. Do you enjoy looking at a BBL? Would you ever wife a BBL? No. You wouldn't want, but Never. you would so he can look at it, but he like ladies, the men will not wife the BBLs. I ain't gonna say what they gonna do. I, mm-hmm. It's just like our homie Tyshawn said, you can go home with it, have fun with it, but it's not something. Oh, natural bodies still matter. Natural bodies matter. <laughs> yeah, but they now there is because I have I have They're a like brother, the one of our friends, you know, nobody but BBLs. You know what I'm saying? He ain't even uh, gonna date nobody. But he, he ain't got the but BBL. He ain't, I don't think he'll marry them either. I don't think he'll marry them either. 
I feel like they're in industry people outside of industry. Oh. I mean, like corporate and, and those entrepreneurial people in the industry are only doing it to keep up with a facade. Yeah. It's like, really, you don't even really want that. You're just keeping up with a facade of an image that you think you need to keep up with because that's what society has pushed on you. I really want to feel a BBL booty. Like, I've never actually like felt one. someone's butt? Yeah. Oh, come on, mom. Take you to the strip club. Yeah, I just want, like, I just want to, like. I'll take you to the strip club. They're I just want to feel. Atlanta. Like, I just want to, like, like, is it hard for real? No. They're soft? Some of them. Oh. It really depends. Oh. It really depends. It depends on their job. You know, some have really crappy doctors. Yeah. Some do injections in the basement. Ooh. It's real lumpy and oh. they look crazy. Oh. And you be like, oh, that girl butt look crazy. You know what I mean? <laughs> then you got some girls who do body fat transfer. So they actually take their own fat but and transfer But that's what I want to feel. Yeah, that feels more real, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you know what? Fun fact. Um, they can actually lose that, that booty after they do all that that surgery because it's actually still just fat out of your body so like the fat can actually still burn yeah you off. lose one third of it that's yeah. what I heard so it's like you do all of this and then what I don't know I looked into getting a BBL they told me I had to gain 20 to 30 pounds girl if I you get like, a BBL I will fight you I can't gain 20 to 30 pounds to save my life so I've Good. been trying to that gain weight God. this whole time God told you, know? you no yeah God was like no nah, hell no no nah. could have known no. don't do it okay final question this is so easy right yeah yeah <laughs> she was all nervous she's like what are we gonna talk about girl you um because it wasn't planned oh um, it was kind of kind of okay okay so <laughs> um final question okay here at it's giving we believe in growth we believe in evolution and okay. we believe in one of the easiest ways to do both of those things is through reading or listening to books we love audible still excited to partner with you um so we would love to know what book has changed your life and why mm, i love that um you are a bad ASS. Yes. One of my great book. favorites. Great book. Um, that was a good book at the beginning of my journey. Okay. You know, that was something that definitely – that one and um, The Subtle Art of Not, not Giving, giving a F. F. You love the cuss word books, okay? Yeah, because I'm kind of like – I'm direct. straight to it. I'm yeah. a direct – I'm Scorpio. I'm blunt. I like that raw energy, mm -hmm. you know? Like keep it straight with me. I like that. I don't like fluff. I'm like, no a lot fluff. of these books be fluffing because they need to be a certain amount of length or pages in order to make more yeah, money. Yeah, they be having too much fluff. Yeah. So I love those two books. Um, you only needed one. Oh, boom. There we go. There's your two. Girl. I just want to say thank you for coming on here today, killing it. You're just awesome. You brought so much value. Thank you for having we me. talked about narcissism, gaslighting, relationships, loving yourself, being your goddess, being a divine Gosh, queen, man. being in your femininity, knowing what it is to find masculinity, understanding the yin and the yang for you and the relationship and the person that you choose. We touched on so many things today. So thank you. Okay. Yes. And guys, if you are home today, you've made it this far, or you're in the car, you're just listening, whatever it may be, please make sure to hit that button below get subscribed hit that little bell so you get a notification with each new piece of content that drops and if no one has told you today you are freaking phenomenal bomb.com nothing can stop you but you but you got to do something about it love you guys Bye. Peace. <laughs>